We'll get started in just a second. Hang on, everybody. Hello! I'm bopping. Ding, da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Good to see ya. So, uh, thank you very much to uh, for coming by. Hey, Brandon Smith is here already. Hey, hey, Boltum. How are you, folks? Great to see everyone. Raekwon, how are ya? Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog is here. The famous. <laughs> He's very speedy. Hi. Hey, Ryan. Yes, I saw that it was almost your birthday. Happy almost birthday. All right. <laughs> this is great. So, uh, yeah, I'm... Uh, oh, uh-oh. Hey, don't worry about it. You you were two minutes late? That's okay. I was two minutes late, too, I think. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, um, this is, uh, is going to be the talk that everybody's been anticipating for so long. Everybody's been begging me to talk about the animated series. And I just, you know, I have wanted to kind of wait for a while and, and uh, let, kind of let emotions settle a little bit and, and make sure that everybody's taking a deep breath before we start to talk about it. Because it can be very emotional, you know, it really can. Um, who else is here? Let's just get some shout outs here. And Brandon Thu says, how are you? I am fine. I am good. Uh, I have been working on various projects, some freelance projects, web design and uh, graphic design and stuff like that, and and working very hard. <laughs> and hopefully looking forward to a week that's just a little bit lighter. I hope you're doing well. Hope you haven't been working too hard. Let's see. Who else? Let's see. Oh, all kinds of folks. Ah, yes, I shouted you out. Good. Glad you're doing stupendous. <laughs> all right, Rick one. Yes. Oh, and look. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is awesome. And we got Martin, we got Tori, we got Luke Roberts. Hey, Luke Roberts. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Let's see. <laughs> this is funny. Actually, I mean, it says, uh, I was actually wondering if you'd sing the Sugar Hill Gang. <laughs> it would be Rapper's Delight, right? In, in your Barney voice. I haven't done that. I probably should at some point. I should have him record that for posterity. I think that would be hilarious. That's a good idea. 
Oh, my goodness gracious. So many questions, so little time. And uh, Emmy, I know you're here somewhere. I, I just tried to message you, but I, I didn't quite have enough time because I was t- just a touch late and uh, wanted to make sure that you are uh, okay with messaging me. Don't want you to have to pay for, uh, for messaging me internationally. I, just, I didn't even think about that until today. Didn't even think about that. So, but hopefully we can connect. Hey, Amanda, I'm excited that you're here too. Good to see you. Absolutely. Yes. Well, Barney has Barney has sort of done some rapping. <laughs> He's done a little bit of rapping. Yay! And a- Emmy's here. Hey, Emmy. Emmy is my moderator, my right hand person, and I really appreciate you. Amelia is pretty fabulous, folks. Pretty darn good at what she does. So uh, look at all these great people here. Do, 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 do. So uh, so as a matter of fact, Trevor, that doesn't even need to be have, have, have to be a question because it's this is what this podcast, I mean this this stream actually is all about today. So yes, that's what is uh, what I am going to get to and uh, talk about a few, maybe a couple other things. As a matter of fact, a couple other things. Someone had asked, uh, if if I could, uh, <laughs> blushing is okay. It's okay. Barney says it's co- it's okay to blush. It's okay to blush. I blush all the time. <laughs> oh my! So yes, uh, I wanted to talk about a couple of things. There was a question last time about what camera I was using for um, my signing. And what camera I was using for other things. And now I actually have three cameras in place. And I thought I would kind of go through the, uh, go through all my stuff. And because some people want to know what's going on here. And this is my setup. This is my rig. Um, I have got, uh, I've got a couple of things going on here. First is, uh, that's my Canon M50. That camera right there. And uh, Sigma 16 millimeter f 1.4 lens is the thing that allows me to get this nice blurred background back here it's a very fast lens you can open it up wide in it and it uh it's really it's really um very cool i'm so happy i got it actually i had the camera for a while and i found out that you could use it for streaming so i thought hey why not and then the next item we have is my my macbook pro it's it's an m1 max it's a wonderful machine i've been a uh, mac user for a long time since like uh, probably the like the first months of 1985, right after the Mac came out. So I got one of the very first Macs. And I'm an old Mac geek, what can I say? But uh, we also have the, uh, speaking of Apple stuff, we've got the iPad Pro. And that's what I use for uh, looking at my Streamily store when I'm signing autographs and stuff. And I can see what people want, what they want me to say. And I check it off. I see the magic number on there that I have to put in the back. <laughs> it's that. And, uh, and so that's really handy. And then I can also see uh, messaging over here. If, uh, if Amelia sends me a message, I'll probably see it there. Hopefully I'll see it there. And the next thing is the Stream Deck XL. That's this thing, and this is my control center right here. It's very cool. You can push buttons to make things happen. For example, if I want to go to the main camera, I push this one. Hi! And then if I want to go back to uh, this other one, let's see where I was. I was on the Stream Deck. Yes, let's go here. So that's the Stream Deck XL. And that's, it's, it's amazing what you can do with this thing. You can program things into it to do a sequence of things and show overlays and things. And when I, when I show things that are in the, the bottom third of the, of the, uh, the frame, uh, URLs and stuff like that, shout outs, that's uh, coming from there. And then there is this Tascam Mini Studio uh, US42, which is this this puppy right here. And this is the thing that allows me to connect my microphone to my Macintosh. And the macro- microphone itself is a Shure SM7B, which is a fantastic mic for the money. It's uh, not not super cheap. But it's not like a little you know a little podcasting mic. It's uh, it's more of a studio mic. Um, Michael Jackson actually used to use these. And uh, so, but it's uh, not some $5,000 mic that you would find in a lot of studios. <laughs> so that's the rig. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I keep building it over time. Um, and uh, uh, <laughs> look at this. Oh, Brandon says, 
Apparently taking notes for future setups is a spectacular. Thank you. Uh, it's it's taken me a little bit of time to, to piece it together because I've been doing a lot of research and figuring out what works for me and what doesn't work for me and uh, what I can afford, <laughs> you know, because some of this stuff can get, it can get pretty expensive. Some of the streamers out there, people who do live streaming all the time, they have, you know, just these amazing rigs. You know, of course, I also have, see, like over here in the corner, I have that that purple light there. I've also got another one back under there. You can see that under the chair. Those are uh, Philips Hue lights that I can control. Um, I, as a matter of fact, I can tell Siri, hey, Siri, back to reality. And she changes them to white. <laughs> and then I say, hey, Siri, turn it purple. And she does that. <laughs> so I got things hooked in. <laughs> Got stuff hooked in. So, um, so yeah, this is, this is the, the, the talk, the talk that everybody's wanted to have. Everybody's been asking for, pardon me while I get some coffee, I have to prep for it. <laughs> and I'll probably put coffee stains on my shirt now, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's change, change is, change is happening. Um, life goes on and, and change happens. And so we, uh, we started out with this guy, the big purple guy, the OG BPG. <laughs> of course, I was not around when this set was being used. Now, I love this set. I think it's great. It's gorgeous. The whole caboose thing and everything. It's, it's wonderful. So this is the Barney that we know and love. Of course, there's also the, the, uh, the backyard gang Barney, and which we called Lovingly, the big blue dog, because he was much more blue at the time. But this is this is pretty much the the set official Barney that has moved forward into the future, and uh, and I love this guy. I mean, he's got the smile, the eyes. He's got the green tummy. He's got the you know the toe balls, the yellow toe balls, which are really important always. Um, and you know this this design was. Uh, changed over time and refined and refined and refined. And our art department did an amazing job, especially folks like Jess Nelson and, and everybody who worked on, on the design of the costume did just an amazing job. Um, Irene Corey, of course, in her, her shop. Um, you know, some, they worked so hard. They did amazing technical things with it, and it was very inno innovative, as a matter of fact. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but there was a... Uh, there's, uh, you know, there was a company that they got to, uh, to create a textile, textile mill that they got to create the fabric, which covered Barney, you know, in the very beginning, it was just bare foam and he was spray painted. And so it didn't have the greatest look and it wasn't really, and it wasn't soft to the touch. I mean, if you, if you know what that kind of foam is and you, if you spray paint it, it actually gets kind of rough. So they ended up saying, well, we need to cover it with fabric. And so... Over time, they developed this fabric, this special fabric that is, uh, it, it stretches, and so it goes back into shape after he moves, and so it sticks like skin to him. Uh, but it's also got this little bit of a nap to it, a little bit of a, a fuzziness to it. So he's got a bit of texture, and he's kind of nice to, you know, nice to hang on to, nice to touch. And, uh, you know, I think, as I, as I recall, um, the textile mill said that this fabric was so great and the suggestions that they got, and it was kind of a new thing that had never been done before. And so they wanted to be able to license this fabric to use for, for other clients. And I, I think, uh, I, I imagine that uh, Lions Group probably patented the fabric. And so, you know, they may be getting royalties from patent uh, patent royalties from this textile mill or whoever uses this fabric. I mean, it's a very specialized fabric and won't, you know, won't be used in a lot of different ways. But uh, boy, what an amazing achievement that was just in and of itself. All kinds of achievements on on our show. But so, you know, we've got we've got the BPG here and we've been living with him for a long time and we love him to death. You know, we really do. And he uh, and he's just you know, he's the, he's the Barney that we have gotten used to. And, you know, the, the thing about change very often is that the thing that we grow up with or the thing that we're introduced to, the kind of thing we're introduced to is the thing that we love the best, right? 
So if you say if you read a book and then they make a movie out of it, you're probably going to like the book better. And if you see a movie but then read the novel afterwards, you're probably going to like the movie better because we get these things set in our brains as, you know, that's, that's the thing. That's the world that, that we know and that we're comfortable with. And so I think that really applies in, in a lot of ways. Uh, Star Wars is a perfect example of this. I mean, we all know how fractious the Star Wars fandom is. That universe is, you know, it evolves and it changes, and people get really, really upset when some kinds of changes are made. You know, they may not like a new character, or they may not like some, some bit of retcon, retconning that was done, you know. Um, they may not like a, a plot line or something, but changes in characters, that's, that's one of the things that people are most proprietary about. They really feel precious about keeping a character the same. And it's a natural thing. It's a totally natural thing. That's just the way people are. Um, I, I remember when I was in junior high, I was in choir. Uh, we had a choir director who was amazing. Uh, he was just incredible. He was so talented. And everybody loved him. And we all had such great fun. I was in choir in, in junior high. And he was, he was just so talented that, you know, he... You know, he didn't stay with us. He moved on directly to a college position, uh, teaching in college, not just to high school, but straight to college because he was that he was that good. And everybody was so disappointed, thought, you know, it's just not going to be the same. You know, anybody who comes in, how could they possibly be as good as he is? And so here comes the next person and people are just kind of, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> but it turns out that the person who replaced him was just as good as he was. He was different, but he was just as good. And then everybody ended up loving him just as much as the first guy. And it wasn't, it wasn't at all disloyal to the first person, not at all. And that's the thing. It's, you know, if there's somebody who comes along and, and is, is different, takes over the same job or whatever, um, it's not being disloyal to say that you like, you know, the new person in the job. Uh, you can still like the person in the old job, right? So... Along comes this new kid on the block, and there he is. So this is a radical departure in look. Well, I mean, in some ways it's a radical departure in the look for the character. First of all, people are, are a lot of people are really upset that it's not going to be live action. This next iteration of the show is not going to be live action. Um, and... The other thing is, and you know, it's going to be CG. And the other thing is, there's he just looks so different, right? We're so used to seeing Barney as uh, as this live action character and fabric and foam and you know the great big smile and stuff. And so here comes something that's very different. And so for a lot of us, uh, for a lot of us, change is very difficult. You know, a lot of us are wired to just really find comfort in things that are you know, really stable and, and uh, really, you know, that we can go to every day or, you know, on a less frequent basis and get in touch with, and it really helps us out. Uh, I know that feeling. I know a lot of you do too. And so that's why a lot of people still watch Barney uh, when they're in their 30s. It's, it's just a thing that some people do. It's very comforting to see that, that same character that we have known and loved for so long. And now here comes, here comes somebody new. Um, and a lot of people wanted new episodes of the show, have wanted new episodes of the show, and they've wanted to have the character exactly the same and have it live action and have everything exactly the same. And, of course, that would be very, that would be fun. That would be very comforting, and it'd be, it would be great. But times change, and, and styles change, and it it's amazing how, you know, we forget that a new generation comes along and what they grow up with is really fundamentally different from what we grew up with. I mean, I grew up with, you know, like Bugs Bunny and old, you know, black and white cartoons and, you know, stuff from the 1930s and 40s being shown on television, you know. And I had no smartphone when I was a kid. 
there was no CGI when I was, you know, when I was growing up. The first CG, some of the first CGI examples I remember were like Star Wars, you know, the like the diagram, the wireframe diagram of the Death Star and that sort of thing. That was all new. Now, kids who have been born within the last couple of years or five years even, they, you know, they very often see so much CGI, so much computer generated stuff every day. And so they're very sophisticated now and they know, you know, that they expect something to be, to look kind of, you know, to look really real. And they're also used to seeing 3D animation like this. And it fits in with their culture. And that's the thing is that the culture changes, you know, generation to generation. Excuse me. And, um, pardon me. I have to hydrate. I'm just talking too much. But, um, but so here's, here's what happens. If we say, if we say that Barney cannot change, that we, we just, no, nope, nope, sorry, forget it. Can't change. He has to say the same. He has to look the same. He has to sound the same. He has to be live action. If we say those things and we say to the people who are growing up now, well, either you get our Barney or you get no Barney at all which is basically what would happen because the studios are going to produce something that sells well within the current culture. And so they're going to do things like this. They're going to make something that is, that is CGI and they're going to make him pretty peppy, I imagine. So we have the situation where we can, we have to consider what we're saying. And when we say no, and the thing about Barney is too, that, you know, Barney has always been about new ideas and going new places and experiencing new things, right? And exploring and welcoming new people and, you know, making new friends. So this guy to me looks like a new friend, you know, he may be different from our Barney, but as, as I saw the other day, somebody said about Star Trek, there are two different Star Treks. They said, this may not be your Trek, but it's somebody's trek. And that's really, really true. I mean, it's like when, you know, when Lower Decks came along, the animated series, a lot of people said, oh, this is horrible. This is just tearing the universe apart and it's just not right. And now it's, you know, it's a hit and people love it. It's just, you know, we have to give things a chance to prove themselves. And I, you know, I haven't seen the series. I don't know what anything is, you know, I don't know what it's gonna be like. Uh, I have no idea. The only thing I know about it is this guy here, is this look. Um, I mean, you know, if you think about it, he's basically pretty the same. Uh, the only things that are di really different are the green in the eyes, uh, the gap in the teeth, which I think is cute, and then the eye bumps, which are, you know, they look a little bit frog-like, but it's more like they got rid of the flatness in the head, and so... They brought down that thing. But it makes him kind of more expressive. And I'm guessing, from an animator's standpoint, and I actually used to do some animation, believe it or not, um, way back when, uh, from an animation standpoint, those bumps above the eyes can serve as eyebrows. And eyebrows are very important in communication. Um, there have been, like, studies that show that, that um, when babies are talking to someone who has no eyebrows, they have a really hard time, excuse me, I'm having, here comes my lunch again, uh, really hard time uh, figuring out what somebody's intention is or their emotion or something. And it's the same with adults as well. Eyebrows are a thing that help in communication, and I'm very sure that they're going to use those up and down, animated up and down, or, you know, and be able to shape them. If they shape them like this, he can be concerned so this Barney is going to be able to show emotions that our Barney couldn't. Uh, Stephen, Stephen White has posted uh, uh, an image of a, uh, a guide that was handed out to the writers when we were doing uh, Barney, when he was writing for Barney. And, and it, was, it was funny. It was a series of images of Barney's face, and it had all these different emotions written underneath. But of course, Barney's face was exactly the same in each image. <laughs> which is pretty funny. <laughs> and, it, and that's true. And so Barney couldn't really express emotion except through his, his voice, 
his energy level and his body, his uh, body language and gestures. And so that was kind of limiting. And so if you're going to really have a character that can express emotion, this is, in a way, it's a lot better design. If, you know, if we had tried to do that with the suit at the time, you know, animatronics and stuff was just really, it was rough. Um, and it was too hard to maintain and it just didn't work, you know, just didn't work out for us. But, um, but anyway, so that's, that's the thing. I mean, uh, we're, you know, we're entering a new era and I think we really need to say, um, uh, everybody deserves their own Barney. It's, well, it's like, um, it's like Steve said at the end of the Barney, uh, documentary he said who is your barney it's like it may not even be barney who is your barney it could be somebody else uh it could be uh you know some other character that you grew up with that they were they were your barney that you really identified with uh they you know it could be a completely different kind of character not a you know uh not an, a, a live action character it could be an animated character or it could be it could be you know steve from blues clues steve and uh, so that's really, you know, that's a great point. So we've got our Barney, and we've got somebody else's Barney, but it's still Barney. It really is. Uh, I, of course, I have to reserve judgment until I see the show as far as what will happen with writing and plotting and whether the character is, you know, I mean, I really doubt they're going to make him, like, mean and snarky or something. I really hope not. <laughs> but we have to give this guy a chance. We really do. If we don't, and we have to say, um, we have to say uh, that, you know, uh, every generation deserves their own Barney. Every generation deserves a Barney that they can identify, uh, identify with really closely. And I'm pretty sure that this Barney is, is a Barney that, that, that young kids are going to be able to identify with. Um, you know, another thing that people have said, it's really sad uh, that people have said, well, you've destroyed my childhood. To which I say, no, we haven't, nobody's destroyed your childhood. Your childhood is still intact. That Barney, your original Barney, he's still there. And a lot of the episodes and such are on YouTube. So you can actually go and see Visit Barney anytime that you want to. You know, I know some of the, some of the episodes aren't there and you know, backyard gang isn't there, but your childhood is intact and nobody's going to take that away from you ever. It's there. It lives, it lives in your mind. Your childhood memories are still there and they are still intact. This is somebody else's childhood. That's what we have to remember. This isn't yours. This isn't mine. This is somebody else's childhood. So we have to respect them, right? We have to know that, uh, that they're going to love Barney and pass on whatever tr tradition that they can. Um, I, I have to, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what I could say, you know, else other than that, um, you know, Luke is saying, uh, what Steve Burns said about Barney is respect. And you guys did a segment for kids for America called uh, respect for others. There was a, uh, it was kids for character, I believe. Uh, is the thing you're thinking of. And that is, you know, respect for others is, is really important. And so we have to respect everybody else's preferences and such, right? I think so. So let me see what we've got here. We've got some questions here. Oh, oh, and by the way, people who are asking, are you going to do the voice? No, I am not doing the voice for the show. Uh, the story is that the uh, characters were all cast, the voice characters were all cast out of Canada. Uh, a good while ago, uh, like months ago, uh, months before, well, I don't know, some months ago. And so that's, that's what's really happening. Um, I have, you know, I'm open to doing something for the show if they would like me to, but it's, it seems like it's probably a strictly Canadian production. Um, and you know, that happens a lot. Uh, Things, you know, when a new company comes along and they buy a piece of intellectual property, you know, like Barney, um, they're going to probably do something different with it, uh, especially after it's been on the off the air for such a long time. 
and they're going to, you know, they feel like they own it, so they're just going to do their own thing. And, you know, for creators, that's an understandable thing. Um, you want to be able to do your own thing, and a lot of producers, when they take over a show and they do a reboot or whatever, they don't want to deal with the people who used to do it because they feel like it's going to be creative interference and they just want to keep things simple, which is kind of understandable. Now, I don't consider this totally to be a reboot because it's so different. It's an animated series, and to me, it's kind of an evolution, not really a reboot. Um, if, um, you, you know, I, I personally think that it's, you know, maybe it's possible, probably not super likely, but it's very possible in, in my movie, as we say, in my mind, <laughs> it's possible that they could do some live action down the road. And I don't know if the if Mattel is going to completely scrap the costumes that they use for personal appearances, because over the last few years, they've done some personal appearances using the, you know, that, you know, the, the Barney costume. I would imagine that they're probably going to build a new costume that looks like this guy. And, um, you know, that would be a very different build. But I, I'm guessing that they probably built this animated character with an eye toward creating a, a costume that they could use for, you know, for walk around stuff. So, um, so I think we can look, you know, we can look forward to that. So, anywho, so um, that is my, that's my blabbering for the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, what does constitute a reboot? That's a good question. I mean, uh, reboots very often are, you know, a remake that is pretty much in, you know, it's probably going to be live action and then live action. That's kind of a reboot. Uh, reboot is very often going to be, uh, they're not going to retcon, or they may retcon. They may change, they may deviate from you know, uh, from canon, from whatever the universe is, and they may change storylines and such, and they may totally change the characters, and they look may change the look of it, and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, in that sense, it could be considered a, a reboot if if they treat the character very differently, and all the, the characters, and the tone, and that sort of thing, and the messaging. Uh, we do know from a leaked document that, uh, apparently, that uh, there probably isn't going to be a lot of educational content and that this is going to be more focused on uh, on entertainment. So that's, you know, that's kind of what we're, we're looking at. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different interesting things coming out of that leaked document. Uh, Jen is talking about this here. According to the Mattel leak, there are going to be live action music videos. Great, yes. Uh, as you said, I imagine they build new costumes to look like the new character. Yep. The one suit Mattel has is in good condition. It's specifically fitted to Carrie Stinson. And Carrie Stinson is uh, is still around. He's still kicking. <laughs> we know and love him. And uh, so it's, you know, there's so many, so many possibilities here. And we can't get ahead of ourselves and say, you know, and just condemn this whole thing out of hand. Because there's just so much possibility. You know, there's just, you know, this could be really fun. <laughs> it could be a lot of fun. Um, let's see what else we have. I'm going to have, uh, we have all kinds of folks. <laughs> we have lots of people asking for the voice, and people do that a lot. And so I'll say, hi there. <laughs> How are you, my friends? It's good to see you. Look, I'm in focus. I fixed my autofocus. And now... I could come closer and closer. Well, not close. there I am. <laughs> Good to see you, everybody. Ooh, my friends are stupendous. <laughs> so, yes. Hey, autofocus is working now. Yeah, I've been tweaking my equipment here, and, uh, and autofocus, autofocus works a lot better now. So, uh, so great to see you. Um, let's see. Uh, who else can we talk about here? What else can we do? Okay, here is uh, here's the question. 
uh, hey, Bob and the Rebooter, are they ever going to put you back in it? And I answered this question just a few seconds ago, uh, and that is I am open to be being to having some part in the show, but uh, I have not been cast in any of the voices, including Barney's voice. Uh, those were all cast in Canada. So um, uh, let's see. What else? We got, uh, hmm. Yeah, Brandon Smith, our famous puppeteer, one of our famous puppeteers. Um, that would be interesting to see a rebuild of the new style Barney in costume form, hoping the previous suits aren't trashed in the process. Be cool if they hired Henson to construct it. And we have we have worked with uh, Henson Studios. We worked with the uh, we worked with the Henson shop in London, as I recall, and we visited over there. And you know, I mean, you you know what it's like to visit a Henson shop, and it's a mind blowing experience. <laughs> you know, it was so cool. It was just so great to be in touch with with that. Um, I uh, you know I I. You know me, I love being in touch with the Muppets. I love working for the Muppets because, uh, again, there's I know there's some new people here, and you may not know that I worked on, uh, I have worked on Muppets shows. That I did the Muppets ABC show a few years back, which was sadly canceled after a single season. And I also worked on uh, Muppets Mayhem, which is, uh, you know, coming up in, which is coming up in May. Mayhem, yes, thanks for that tip earlier. <laughs> So uh, Muppets Mayhem, I uh, do graphic design for TV and film. That's one of the many things I do. And, uh, and so it was really, you know, it was really um, great to be able to uh, go into the shop and see all the, all the workings. And I think we were getting Jeff Ayers fitted for a new costume, I think it was. I think, it, or, or Jeff Brooks. I can't remember who it was. Oh, Jeff Brooks. And, uh, and that was great. It was just amazing. And I used to do... I used to do uh, some puppetry myself, some professional puppetry. Uh, again, another thing you probably didn't know about me. A uh, long time ago, um, I did, <laughs> yes, mayhem! It's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. It really is. I Have you seen the, the trailers and such? They just came out a couple days ago. I'm going to start posting some of that stuff on my page. So keep a lookout for that because uh, that is... Yeah, that's going to be great. It was, you know, they have so many guests on that are amazing and cool and and uh, funny and and they, you know, it was like uh, the original Muppet Show. They had that was a thing for them is they had a lot of real world guests. And when you see Danny Trejo rocking out to the mayhem, that's that's awesome. That is really awesome. So. uh uh, so, uh, who else? We have some other questions here. Do, 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 do. Thank you for your kind words. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> we have lots of different folks here. Uh, so many questions. <laughs> yes, we're making we're making con we're making connections here. Isn't that great? Yeah, I can't wait for the album to drop either. It's it's you know the. I love, I just love the way they approach rock. It's just this kind of cool, loose, everybody sings kind of, uh, uh, you know, it almost sounds like a kind of a garage band feel in a way, but, and yet uh, the, the uh, you know, the musicians that they use and the people who write the, the music and produce the music are, they're brilliant. They're just brilliant. They're just brilliant. They really are. And it's really, you know, their arrangements are awesome. Their instrumentation's awesome. And I've heard some of the, you know, you've heard some of the tracks, and it's so great. And, <laughs> yeah. Find a spot for Trio on their projects. He's so, he seems so out of place in a way because he's so rough, you know. I don't know if he's brought a, I don't think he's brought a machete <laughs> into one of these, into one of these guest appearances yet. <laughs> that would be interesting. Ugh. That would be very funny. But, um, oh, oh, here's an interesting question. Um, have you considered doing more analysis streams about movies and TV? And actually, I have thought about doing that. Um, streams and, um, and pre-records, pre-recorded videos. Uh, I have a plan to do more pre-recorded videos. In fact, I probably should have done this as a pre-recorded video. And then, you know, uh, then come on and just answer questions about it. But uh, I thought I should probably just go ahead and, 
and get this out of the way because people have been asking for it. <laughs> They've been very, very, very uh, patient in, in, my, in waiting for me to, uh, to talk about this publicly. So um, <laughs> here's another great question. Here's John Phelps saying, hey, Bob, do you have any plans of having Backyard Gang era photos for autographs? And the answer to that question is yes, I do. I have to put those together. I have to put together some images. It's tough to find really good quality images that are good for signing from that era because, uh, you know, it was just a, it was a long time ago. And in some cases, I'd have to get in touch with people who have better quality files like uh, photographers and such. And so I will be doing, um, I will be doing some, uh, some autographs on photos from the Backyard Gang era. Uh, and I need to uh, also let you know that I have this new store open. I mean, if you saw my Streamily signing, um, you know that I have this store, streamily.com slash yes, that Bob West. And this is where you go to find things for uh, things that I autograph, photographs, and I've got pins. And I've got a couple of new things coming up. One is a uh, one is a photo that I just put up because I had been letting my, you know, my Chuck E. Cheese fans, I had been neglecting you, I'm so sorry, but I created a Chuck E. Cheese only photo, uh, and that that is now available on my store, and then I'm also going to have a, a, a I believe I'm going to have an 11 by 17 poster, and it's going to be a Barney poster, and the si- the, the style of it is going to be something that you have not seen from Barney. And so uh, I think you're going to like it. A lot of you, um, a lot of you, especially a lot of you who dig anime, may like it. So that's all I'm going to say about it. I'm going to reveal that very soon, in the next few days. Um, Who else? What else can we talk about here? Let's see. I've got something marked. Oh, we have have Rachel saying, are you going to show more behind-the-scenes Barney footage from your time on air? And the answer to that question is also yes. I have a lot of footage. <laughs> uh, Stephen White's got some pretty good footage too, but I I think I may have more footage, behind the scenes footage, than anybody else uh, from Barney. At least my time at Barney. Um, I um, I have clips that I need to organize, and I need to format them to to show here, and and uh, and you know I just have I have hours and hours worth of footage. So I have to pare it down. You know, I've got a lot of footage that just isn't interesting at all. It's just like, you know, uh, things happening on the set, and it's just people kind of wandering around doing their jobs, and it's not very interesting. So I have to cut it down to things, po- the portions that are interesting to show you. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be... Um, I'm going to, over the next uh, few months, I'm going to be putting out more of that. And I want to try to do... Um, I want to try to, to get some footage from other folks as well. Maybe from Stephen White, if he's watching. I would like to get some footage and put that up. And in addition, at some point for these live streams, I hope to start interviewing folks. Uh, well, either for live streams or for, uh, for pre-recorded podcast-style videos. And so that way, um, you know, we can we can connect with our old friends and we can talk about stuff. And Stephen White is here. Yes. <laughs> there he is. Yes. Yes, sir. Rainbow Beard himself, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I love the I love the bedhead, the hair. It's so good. That's kind of a almost like a a, a, a tinker putt feel, isn't it? You know, the, the mad scientist kind of guy. <laughs> it's so great. Hey Stephen. Stephen and I worked on, I don't know if you know the story there, but Stephen and I worked on, um, uh, <laughs> yes, Rainbow Beard says, Arr! <laughs> Stephen and I worked together on uh, Chuck E. Cheese for a-, a long time before he came to Barney. And uh, so he wrote many of the, the, the goofy jokes and stuff that, uh, that Pasquale told and some of those really funny stuff, you know. And we used to have such a great time, didn't we? Didn't we have a great time? We had an amazing time in the studio. Sometimes we did, I think it was like two or three days worth of recording for a Chuck E. Cheese show. And, uh, and it, was, it was amazing. It was positively wizard. 
It was positively wizard. <laughs> it's true. I wish I had a, a time machine to go back and, and do that stuff. Uh, I have some, actually have some footage of, of me and, uh, me and Scott Wilson and, um, I uh, can't remember who else is, uh, Carly Sakani. Uh, in the studio doing uh, recording the Barney or not the Barney shows, but the the Chuck E. Cheese show, or a Chuck E. Cheese show. So uh, I'm going to pull that up too at some point. At some point. So uh, so. <laughs> uh, let's see who else I can sit here. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Rory and Terry and and <laughs> and Ali says yo ho ho. R <laughs> and Kayla has to throw in an R as well. Isn't it funny? You know, it's and as a matter of fact, yes, it was. You know, David was so amazing. Dave was such a talent. What an incredible talent David was in that suit. And you know, and Stephen White, an absolute legend. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, we had, we did have lots of fun recording the show, but so, uh, I need to, let's see what else I wanted to move on here. Who else? What else can we talk about? <laughs> oh, how funny. And Trevor says, Bazinga. <laughs> Love that show. I still haven't seen the, uh, many episodes of that show. It's like as much as I love everybody who's in that show and as much as people tell me, you know, this show was written for you. I have not watched much of Big Bang Theory. I think I need to just sit down and start binging. But it was on for how many seasons? How many seasons was that on? I, oh, man. But yes, Bazinga is right. <laughs> oh, so, well, listen, folks. I, um, I just want to, I need to say uh, thank you again. Thanks very much and, uh, for, for coming out and listening to me blabber. This is one of my longer ones, I think. And I will... Um, and I will, oh, that's okay. That's all right. Hey, Jesse, how are you? Good to see you. I'm glad you made it. Well, you can watch the replay. It will be, it will be on. And now you've got a shout out. So you are immortalized in the lower third of the screen. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. So, yes, I wanted to just say thanks for coming out. And uh, I want to also do this, which is important. If you are on Facebook, hit like. Make sure you get uh, notifications. If you're on YouTube, hit subscribe to my channel and get notifications. And if you are on Twitch, make sure that you hit follow and get notifications so that you can uh, know when I am coming on. We've got more. Every time we come up, I come up on a stream, I have more people uh, coming up on Twitch. And I get a few more followers over there. And that's another thing is that I, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about uh, streaming live on Twitch more often. I'm th thinking about thinking about doing... Uh, playing video games on Twitch, which would be funny because I don't play video games. <laughs> the video games that I played when I was younger were like in actual arcades, like, you know, Centipede and Joust and, and Galaga, <laughs> you know, the real classics and Pong. I remember the first time I saw a Pong machine was in a, a bowling alley. That was so cool. Wow, man, you can make it. You can make the paddles move. <laughs> That's how simple we were back then. What can I say? Speaking of, of, of technologies changing and things becoming more, you know, more, more sophisticated. But yeah, so, uh, so there's that. And then I also want to make sure that, uh, that you know about this. If you want to get a shout out for yourself or for somebody else, a video shout out customized, just go to cameo.com slash yes, that Bob West. Oh, and I am now doing, I'm now available for cameo live calls. Huh? Huh? How about that? <laughs> so they did away with calls the way they did cameo calls before. It's different now. So what you do is you go there and you look for the live calls button under on my page. Uh, I'll just put that up there so that you can keep seeing it. Um, and, and then uh, what you do is you sign up and you get a choice of three different dates. You propose three possible dates and times. And, um, and hopefully I will be available for one of those dates and times. 
And what I will do is I'll take a look uh, and l look at my schedule and see if I'm available. And if I am, I'll uh, indicate which one will work for me. And then we'll, we'll uh, set it up and we'll have our live call. If it doesn't work, if none of those three work for me, then I will, I, I will get back to you. I believe I can get back to you and I can propose other dates and times. So if you're going to, to try to get a, um, one of these calls, uh, I would suggest the easiest times for me are going to be between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Pacific time on most days of the week. Um, I won't always be available. Uh, when I start uh, back on a TV show or something, uh, my times will change and it'll probably only be available on the weekends. But for now, while I'm doing freelance work and my schedule is flexible, uh, you may be able to get me at those times between 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so there's that. And, um, and just one more time, just to make sure that you remember this, same thing with Streamily. Yes, that Bob West. That's, you know, that's where I am pretty much everywhere. <laughs> so that's where the online store is. If you want to uh, see something uh, autographed live on my next live stream. And as a matter of fact, I forgot to announce my next live stream for signing autographs for things purchased through the Streamily store is going to be on the 30th. That will be Sunday, the 30th. And throw that up there one more time just so that you can see it streamily.com slash yes that bob west so the 30th is i believe that's a sunday and uh and i i'm pretty sure it's going to be at 6 p.m on that sunday so uh thank you very much and uh i am going to sign off with that folks thank you very much for being here everybody and um i'm going to uh i'm going to put this up you're going to be able to, to uh, see the uh, see the replay, and I'm also going to add, I believe this time I'm going to add some links to the description and so that you can um, so that you can uh, see those URLs that I put up, those links that I put up there. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. You guys are the greatest. I, I love that you're so, you know, you're so consistent in coming to see me. I love you lots, and, uh, and I am going to, with that, I will sign off and say I will see you next time. Keep using your imagination. Thank <laughs> you.